Hi, I'm Luis Gutierrez Mock. I'm from San Jose, California, and I'm a queer transgender Chicano. When I first came out to my family, they were not so into it. I'm, my mom totally knows everything before I do, so anytime that I'm going to do anything, she already has an idea that it's happening and coming. Um, so I, I remember very clearly after I had already been out to myself as being trans, but I hadn't told my family, you know, she sat me down and she told me, you better not ever think you're going to be a man. You know, and it was, it was really odd. I was like, that's, that's the funniest thing to say, you know, to your child. It's, you know, it doesn't, you know, it's not very affirming and it made me feel like, oh God, I can never tell her. Um, when I when I did finally tell my parents that I'm trans, they they weren't terrible, but my mom and I didn't talk for a month. And this so not having her in my life for a month really impacted me. And I think that what really helped was that I just had a lot of patience with her. And I knew that my parents loved me, that my family loved me, and we sort of worked on them progressing together. And I think that a lot of that was because I asked them to help me pick out a name. And when I first asked my mom and my dad to pick out a name, my mom was like, oh, why don't we call you Pancho Villa? And I was like, okay, you're maybe not so ready for this right now, so we'll just, we'll wait a little while. So I, I gave it, you know, like three or four years. And they had some time to get used to it, to get used to, you know, me being their son. And we returned back to that conversation and after three or four years of waiting, they picked out their own names. So my mom's name is Maria Luisa, so that's where the Luis comes from. And then my dad's name is Ronald, and my middle name is Ronaldo. So, you know, it's kind of, it, it's funny to me that it took that long for them, and my sister, my sister weighed in, you know, we had this whole family vote thing. But it took that long for them to pick out their own names, but I think that it made it really special and really helped them to feel like they were part of this. I think that parents have such a strong role um, within the lives of LGBT youth, particularly for transgender youth, especially for trans Latinos, where family is so important to us, you know, and I think that being able to have that family acceptance, we know that from research from the Family Acceptance Project, that family acceptance is a huge protective factor in the lives of LGBT youth, and being able to have that really helps to, you know, really helps a young person to accept themselves for who they are, to know that they are loved, to know that, you know, they're worthy of their family's love. So I think that and for me, school was always something that I felt like I was good at. And when everything else in my life was sort of collapsing, for me, going to school or, you know, doing something that, that that was fulfilling to me was very helpful. You know, it really helped me through a lot of hard times in my life. Um, it helped me through a lot of depression, a lot of self-harm, a lot of suicidality, and really having this, this thing to go to and to do um, kind of pushed me to, to move beyond what luckily was a, just a stage in my life for me. And so I, you know, I, I became really involved with um, ethnic studies work and with like sort of some sexuality studies work and I was really into you know different types of research and somebody who I knew and who I was close with um, was murdered and she was a trans Latina and it really you know just knowing somebody who, who I felt close with um, and having that connection with somebody who was murdered just because she's trans really I think shifted my the trajectory of my life and with what I wanted to do in terms of research suddenly this whole like identity development thing seemed to be not so important and I was really more interested in sort of some of the 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 resilience that can be found within trans communities some of the risk factors and really doing research um, to highlight what's happening within trans communities in order to provide more funding and to create policy level change I think that sort of looking back at myself when I was younger, oh, God, I would really want to tell myself, oh, you're such a mess, <laughs> you know, like, figure it out already, but I feel like I should have more compassion for that younger self 
who didn't know what was going on. Like, oh, it's tragic. It was tragic. I had giant glasses. They're back in now, so I would have been maybe a little hip. You know, I had giant glasses. I had big hair. I had braces until I was 18 years old. And, you know, I just hated myself. You know, I, I, I hated everything about myself. And I feel like if I could just go back and tell myself, you know, you are beautiful. You know, you, you know, even the way you are, even like this, this big haired glasses, you know, kind of like semi zitty, totally dork person that you are, you know, like you are worth something. And I think that that is what we need to, you know, to really to tell each other. That's what we need to tell, you know, the younger, um, LGBT folks. That's what we definitely need to tell our elders because our elders don't hear that from us either. You know, we really need to hold, I think that we really need to hold um, young people and our elders closer within LGBT communities.